Hi, this video is going to cover two different projects, uh, both based on a circuit that I put together that converts uh, PS2 keyboard signals to uh, serial. Um, the first project is going to be RC2014 base. This is my RC2014 uh, home built retro computer. Um, sitting back here, you can buy various RC2014 kits. Um, on Tindy from a guy in the UK who uh, invented the RC2014. Very easy to use retro computer kit. Um, highly recommend it. Um, mine's kind of souped up with a bunch of my own boards, VFD display, um, etc. So anyway, there's going to be two projects in this video. One is going to be with the RC2014. The other is going to be a MIDI based project. As people may have noticed, I've been doing MIDI. So let's talk about keyboards on the RC2014. Uh, you can see with my RC2014 I've added a VFD display. I've had this on here for some time. It's a 4x40 display I got on eBay. It's rigged up uh, to display whatever appears on the serial port will also appear on the display. Uh, I'm currently running CPM, the ROM WBW distribution. Um, so this makes kind of a standalone computer, but if you're going to have a standalone computer um, you need a keyboard. So the first option was this uh, keyboard here. This is, uh, you can buy this uh, from Tindy, from the RC2014 guy in his Tindy store. It's a nice, cool little retro mini keyboard using these uh, little micro switches. Um, I think it's really cool. Um, it's got a little micro controller there on the bottom that converts the key switches to serial. Um, so let's try it out. So let's hit C, and then let's get a D, I, R directory. Um, not the most practical thing to try to run CPM on a 4x40 display, but uh, you can imagine um, writing a custom program or something to display on that. So anyway, you can use this little keyboard. Uh, you know, it's great. Push the buttons on it. Um, kind of fun to build, uh, but not the most practical thing, at least for someone with big fingers like me, to uh, to type on. Uh, so what I would rather use is one of these old PS2 mini keyboards that I have here. Um, a little bit more convenient. And so I'm going to develop a circuit that will let me do that. Okay, so the goal is going to be to convert um, PS2 keyboard to a TTL level serial port um, because that's what the RC2014 comes with is the uh, uh, TTL level ports. Um, you can easily convert this to a, a real RS232 by using a MAX232 or MAX202 or, or similar uh, line driver, but we'll just use TTL serial and that will allow us to plug um, our PS2 keyboard directly into uh, the RC2014. So this is an extremely simple schematic. There's only one chip on it, which is going to be an ATtiny85 microcontroller. The ATtiny85 is a small microcontroller. It has onboard uh, flash, RAM, whatever microcontroller uh, needs. Um, I program it in my USB programmer. You can program it with uh, um, in-circuit programming as well. Um, it doesn't need a crystal, although I have put an optional crystal uh, footprint in the schematic. Um, very tiny, easy to use microcontroller. Somewhat limited in capability because it's only uh, 8 pins. Uh, so let's take a look. Over here on this side, we're going to have our PS2 keyboard connector. Um, that's going to need a ground and it's going to need power. So power goes through this pin here and I used a uh, PTC fuse uh, to 5 volt. Uh, the PTC fuse is good because uh, keyboards are supposed to be fused. Um, back in the 90's I once uh, burned up a keyboard fuse on a motherboard by doing a uh, sort of half-baked keyboard project that I wired up wrong. So it's nice to have that fuse because you are putting 5 volts out on the port you know, if someone botches a keyboard project, it doesn't fry your entire circuit board and computer. So we'll use a little PTC fuse there rated at 1 amp. So that's uh, ground and power uh, to the PS2 connector. The other thing it has is a clock and a data. So the clock pin and the data pin will both go into the microcontroller. Um, out of the microcontroller, 
we're going to have this pin here which is the transmit line and this goes over to a six pin header which will plug into our RC2014 so we've got transmit comes out of the microcontroller uh, 5 volt power from the RC2014 um, ground from the RC2014 and these remaining three pins um, are not necessary I wired them to uh, solder jumpers and wired them to some of the unused pins on the AT Tiny 85. Um, I also put an LED down here and a dropping resistor for it. Now the LED, I didn't know this at the time, I wired it to the reset pin um, on the AT Tiny 85. So the reset pin, it can either be a GPIO or a uh, reset. Um, you set a fuse when you program it to tell it which one to do. Uh, so I use that as a GPIO. Um, there's very limited drive capability with that. I didn't know that at the time, um, that that drive capability is limited. But fortunately it is enough to light a high efficiency blue LED. So I wanted to give acknowledgments to uh, two projects that made this possible, um, that I found on the internet and that helped me program the microcontroller. The first was the AT Tiny 85 UART library that's by Garage Lab. And what that is is a library that lets you turn um, a pair of pins on the AT, AT Tiny 85 into a UART, Universal Asynchronous uh, Receiver Transmitter. Um, so that allowed us to get serial out on the transmit pin. The other was the AT Tiny 85 PS2 keyboard library. Uh, that's from an interfacing a microcontroller with PS2 keyboard. Uh, article at nerdkits.com that allowed me to wire the AT Tiny 85 to the PS2 keyboard. Uh, basically, you take both those projects, put them together, and you end up with a PS2 keyboard to serial output. Here is the completed uh, PS2 uh, to TTL serial adapter. As you can see, it's a very small. Over on this side, we have the PS2 uh, mini DIN jack. Um, let's flip it around. So we've got the mini DIN jack. We've got the 8-pin um, AT Tiny 85 microcontroller. We've got the PTC fuse, um, dropping resistor for the LED, LED, and the 6-pin header for the RC2014. As I mentioned before, I put on a footprint for a crystal, but you don't need that level of precision with this project, so the crystal footprint is unpopulated. Okay, so let's try out the PS2 to TTL serial adapter. There is my keyboard. Here is the adapter. Plug it into the keyboard. And we'll just take it and plug it into the serial port on the RC2014. That back there. And let's boot up. So if everything works, I should be able to hit C. There we're in CPM. Or I can do DIR. Let's run Microsoft Basic. Let's write a simple program. So there is a very simple program, run, and now we're printing hello world. Um, so working uh, pretty well I think, reset. Um, I think this is successful and you know if I want to do some demos using the RC2014 uh, with just the VFD with no external computer, um, I can do that using you know nice uh, easy to use mini PS2 keyboard. Um, okay, let's take another look at something else I can do with this same circuit. So while I was doing some MIDI projects, I thought, you know, I've got this circuit. What if I could use that, because MIDI is also serial protocol, to drive a MIDI uh, sound module from a keyboard? Why not? So modifying this circuit to work with MIDI is, is very simple. So 5-pin DIN connector for MIDI. Uh, MIDI, we need a current loop that's going to drive the optocoupler in the instrument. And that current loop um, comes through these two 220 ohm resistors. One of them goes to 5 volt, 
the other 220 ohm resistor goes to the transmit line on our microcontroller. So all we did to this circuit is rather than running the transmit line to a header for the RC2014, ran it over through this 220 ohm resistor to the five pin uh, DIN jack for MIDI. Also need a ground line on the MIDI and, and I put an optional five volt jumper down here for some other um, future expansion ideas that I have. This is a very simple modification. Let's take a look at that board. Okay, so here is the completed uh, PS2 uh, MIDI adapter. Let me put the PS2 TTL serial adapter next to it for comparison. So you can see we have the mini DIN connector for the PS2 keyboard over here. Um, a power jack for 5 volt in to power this. The PTC fuse. The AT Tiny 85. Two uh, 220 ohm resistors. The 5 pin DIN jack for uh, MIDI. Big jack. Um, the LED and the dropping resistor for the LED. As before, there's a crystal header that's not used and there is uh, this header here for future expansion if I want to do something with the unused pins. So let's try this out now. So I've got my Roland SC55 set up, set down the mini PS2 keyboard. Uh, we've got the adapter here, so let's plug keyboard to adapter. MIDI into the other side of the adapter and uh, power. And let's just stuff it over here to the side. And so it should be working now. The keyboard should be powered up and we should be able to play uh, notes using the keys get more volume. So I've mapped each major row on the uh, keyboard to a different instrument. So up here we have a bagpipes. Uh, piano. Um, xylophone, orchestra hit, flute, and the various other keys I've mapped to uh, percussion sound, so and so I am not a musician, so I make no claim to have set this up in a sensible uh, manner other than I did take what MIDI said was uh, middle C and I put it at the start of each row and then went from there. So, um, But there you have it. So if you knew how to play music, you could probably play music with this thing. Um, for me, it's just a toy to make noise. Uh, now, a, a PS2 keyboard does have, usually has a limitation how many keys you can simultaneously push. So let's try that. So we could push ZXCV, but we couldn't push anything else. Well, actually, we can push ZXCV and N, but not ZXCV and B. That's just kind of the way a PS2 keyboard works. It has to do with how it encodes things internally. Some combinations you can do. Usually you can hit four or five keys together um, maximum. So I've got this baby. I'm going to put her in front of it and see what she thinks of the keyboard. There we go.
있습니다. 